Sharon Cox lives on five lots in the Klaus Park area, where last year's James River flooding eroded part of her property. She fought back this fall when the James River was lowered to a small stream. I was able to, to put my ladder out here and then shovel in the silt, thinking I was getting back my dirt. <laughs> she also used wood chips from 200-year-old elm trees to build the bank up to two feet high. Cox hopes chicken wire and sandbags will hold her man-made soil in place as the river rises again. The Jamestown College art professor said she's fought back to protect her Japanese sculptures. What happens if you have concrete pieces on dirt and the water comes by, it erodes underneath of it. So this then is protecting this embankment from that water so that I don't lose those sculptures. <laughs> As the river rises, it will seep through the soil into her basement, but she's prepared. I am so ready for it this year, it's no big deal. <laughs> she's moved artwork to higher levels and raised her furnace and washing machines. She will use seven sub pumps to control the seepage to three inches so that it doesn't destroy her sheetrock and insulation. Cox said the river flooded three times, including this year. During the past 18 years, she's lived here. She compares battling the flood to battling cancer six years ago. Anybody that has cancer or knows anybody that has cancer, there is a constant and perpetual fear. It's going to come back. And I've explained how it feels to be a flood victim, <laughs> just like a cancer victim, because you are constantly thinking, what's the weather? Am I going to get flooded again? Should I fix what got flooded last year? The river is therapeutic for her and will not scare her away. This is part of the healing process that as an artist I really, really need. And just about any artist understands that need for a sanctuary to go into to be able to do their artwork. For JCTV News, I'm Richard Schmidt.